In this tutorial today, we'll be working with Rapid Weaver, the Stacks plugin from Your Head Software, and a specific stack called the Mouseover stack from Jonas Themes. We're going to create a couple of images today and show you how you can use them um, right in your Rapid Weaver project to create some neat effects for your website. So let's get started. So we're here in Rapid Weaver and uh, we've created a um, uh, a new stacks page here and you can see that our uh, buttons the mouse over and these other ones have now been installed and you're familiar with stacks so we can drag and drop uh, right there and um, what you want to make sure you do is um, to be able to add the images to this stack you want to uh, uncheck the render HTML and then we can see the spaces to put uh, the two images so you're going to have a base image and then when you mouse over you'll the other image will show and so that's how that works there so you see the difference um, that kind of goes away and just compacts the the stack down but we want to open it up um, just like that so now we're in Pixelmator and um, today we're going to create uh, a simple button we'll create two images and um, I've already created these images right here. I'll give you an example of what we're going to do. So there's the, the button with the popped out look. And our other image will look like this. Uh, it'll look pushed in and it'll also have a glow to it. That'll look really neat when we, have, uh, when we, when we put it in the mouse over stack and you see the effect. So we'll get that nice effect here. So let's create these two right now. We'll shut these off. So to create a simple button, go to the Marquee tool and pull a rectangle um, a, a little bit smaller than the size you want to end up with because what we'll do is we'll I'll use um, Edit, Refine Selection, and we'll, when we increase the size of it using Refine Selection, you'll notice we'll get the rounded corners we're looking for. So you can see the effect. We just want to do something nice and that looks okay. If you have any uh, bumpy edges there you can use smooth and just um, you know usually one percent will do it. That's good. And we get our basic shape now of the button. So perfect. Let's go now to our gradient tool and we're going to use, um, let's see if I can make sure I have the right gradient here. Should be this, this one and I'll show you the um, hex code for it. So we're white here and there's the number for that if you want to uh, use it. But you know really any gradient will do whatever color you want your button. Um, we're going to use the same gradient on both images. So now come out here with your um, gradient tool and we will uh, pull the gradient and if you use the shift key it will stabilize the tool so you'll notice it won't it won't move all over on you when you hold the shift key it's nice and stable and then we can um, uh, pull it where where we want there so we'll just do something like that should be good and we will create a new layer above this and we'll do another gradient and we'll just simply do the opposite of what we just did so we'll start down low Hold the shift key to stabilize it and we'll come up to the top here and um, we'll just do like that. That should be good. Okay, and we also will need to keep the shape here. We're going to um, create a uh, double drop shadow, so m create another layer underneath the two gradient layers and right above your uh, background layer. And what you want to do is go over and choose black from the crayon palette here and do a shortcut to fill which would be alt or option command F and that will fill it for you just hit OK and you notice we have our little black selection right there and we're good to go and we can command D for deselect and we'll actually duplicate this layer so we'll do the wide shadow here. We'll choose that one and we'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll kind of do this by look here. Don't want it too big. I would say 16 is probably good. And our other shadow, we'll do a tighter shadow. 
same thing filter blur Gaussian blur this time probably around 10 uh, yeah we'll do 11 and now both of these shadows we're just going to use the keyboard to drop it down let's try two and then the tight shadow maybe just one and there we go we got a nice shadow to that there okay now we want to add um, a highlight layer also so go ahead and command select the shape one more time and right above the two black layers uh, go ahead and add another layer and we'll fill this with white so we'll go over here and we'll choose white and then the same thing option command F to fill it and then we can uh, command D select and we should have a white layer too and we want to um, go to the move tool which we're on and go up uh, one probably two pixels um, you know what I'm gonna do is right now we'll change the background color um, actually I'll just add a different one here and let's see find a color so we can see that highlight layer a little bit easier and there we go now we can see our nice highlight layer so that shows up a little bit better okay well now let's add the text and um, we'll do that we'll just go up to the top here go to our text layer and we'll just put out a bounding box here and I find that the actual fonts panel is a little more stable than this over here so I always open this and, and do all my changes right within the, the font panel so we'll um, choose a basic um, font here. I think uh, this one should be fine. And let's see what regular will be. And we'll just do um, the word push. And I think I used bold. So we'll try that. And we'll increase the size to where we think is good. Should be good. And if you want to move it, you can always use the keyboard to move it just slightly. And that looks about center, so that's fine. Now go ahead and command click on this layer and right underneath it add another layer. And we're going to put a white, um, we're going to fill it with white. So again, option command fill or F. Uh, so go ahead and add another layer here. And we're going to use the color will be a bright kind of aqua might even one of these um, ice is probably fine that would work on here and we'll do the same thing option command F and we'll, we'll show you what that's for later and then command D to deselect okay so now let's add a, a gradient to this um, the front of this text here we're gonna add a, a circular gradient so we'll command click on the text again and right above this we'll add another layer and um, we'll go over to our gradient tool here and I've created a circular gradient with a bunch of different colors so start with maybe like a yellow and a green and some blues and create to something like this um, you know choose what you want what looks good and we'll just pull this um, the slight glow we want it to kind of glow from the inside and so that's probably good and command D select so it's kind of like lit from down here you can start to see this glow and that should be good and we'll call this one um, gradient glow probably fine okay now let's um we want this glow text to be dropped down so make sure you're on the move tool you can just hit V to change to the move tool and we'll drop the glow text down a couple so we see that it kind of glows a little and I think we'll blur this let's um, zoom in a little and we'll just blur this layer slightly we'll just do Gaussian blur and 10 is probably good so it's more of a glow and there's not so sharp an edge there that's fine and we'll back off again and that looks pretty good and I'll shut this off for now and we'll shut off the gradient layer and also the pushed in look so here's our 
button that's popped out and that's pretty much the look except for we want the text highlight to show up this is that white layer of text same thing drop that down a pixel or two and we'll also blur this layer zoom in for you again filter blur gaussian blur and we'll do the same thing i think about 10 uh, maybe a little less about eight is fine So now what we want to do is we want to export these two images. This was very simple to create. Of course, you can get more detailed um, and, and think of all kinds of different effects that you can do from the, the different states of the buttons. And we'll just um, export these. And, uh, and we want to um, notice we have this large canvas. But what we can do is with the entire canvas, um, we can either change its size. Um, but this is a nice feature is you can actually trim and what this does here is it'll trim any um, transparent pixels away so if I shut off my background layers um, this is obviously all transparent it will trim the entire canvas right up into the point of where the shadow is and that's what you want to do before you export um, both of your buttons here so let's do that now and um, there we go and see it cuts it down just to the first um, tr you know, pixel of the shadow for us. So it gets rid of all of that. And it's important because in the stack, we'll show you later, um, you can't have the button different sizes or shifted because you'll get movement in that direction. So you want to make sure it's trimmed. And since they're both in the same space, it maintains that, that effect. Okay guys, we're back in Rapid Weaver now and uh, we're going to drop these two images right in the mouse over stack. So um, we have them on our desktop here and we want to make sure we put the, um, them in a certain order. Down on the bottom we want the popped out look and up top we'll put in the, uh, the pushed in effect. And then before we um, check this out, if we go into the main stack inspector up here, uh, there's a few things you can do. Obviously, the important thing is um, what is this link to? So this is a button. You can put your link right in here. And um, these two things are important. We've created this button a certain size. And if the number in here is smaller than that, it will cut off the image. So experiment a little bit with the size. You should know about the size of your graphic. So start there. And make sure it's even bigger than your shadow so everything shows up and then the fade effect is the effect basically transition between one image to another so we can really see it we'll do it up to about three and then we'll preview this okay and that's pretty cool uh, it's kind of a rubber button it's squishing in and then the light turns on you can really see that effect as you mouse over that. And so you can go into that um, stack inspector and change how you, the, really the feel of the transition of the two. Um, and so that's really a very neat way to create um, buttons that um, really do something a little extra special. They make your site a little different. And uh, you may not be an artist or graphic designer, but you can see how easy it is in Pixelmator to create something real simple. Um, instead of the static button, you have something that has a really neat effect. Um, and this is pretty easy to do. Well, we want to thank you for joining us today, uh, learning how to use the mouse over stack with Rapid Weaver, and uh, how to use Pixelmator to create some neat graphics for that. Uh, if you really enjoy these, um, uh, the tutorials that I'm doing, please uh, comment and like the uh, videos and also um, subscribe to my channel. I uh, hope you like the new look and feel of our, our tutorials and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.